So welcome everybody. This is uh, Cyclide Town Hall number 10. Um, we had a with a little uh, brief town hall in um, March a few weeks ago, but we did that on Discord and that wasn't recorded. So we'll we'll count this as number 10. And it's a pretty big one as we've got uh, Colin joining the team. I'll pass over to him in a second to say hello and um, introduce himself. Uh, and then we've got a big update on billing following on from the, the January call that we did, um, the recording there, lots of updates and can give you an idea of what's coming and when. Um, a quick uh, feature uh, demo to show you, always try and show something if I can, um, and then over to you guys for any questions, that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, um, for those that don't know, uh, Colin has joined the team to head up uh, success and, and help you guys out with, with anything and get most out of sight glide. So, uh, yeah, once again, welcome. You've been with us a couple of weeks now, Colin, and getting up to speed, but I'll, I'll hand over. Thanks, Luke. Um, yeah, I think it's just nice to, um, you know, introduce myself. So obviously nice to meet DJ and Helen on the call, but whoever wasn't able to join the call. So, yeah, I'm Colin based in uh, Johannesburg in South Africa. Um, definitely very excited to join the Cyclide team um, and, you know, um, assist Luke and, and Matt and the team to just, you know, provide the most value to you guys as clients. Um, from my side, so I come from a background also in software as a service, um, specifically, like I said, more on the emails. So I work for a very big email software provider in South Africa. Um, definitely learned a lot about that. Definitely a big, it was a, a startup that ended up going into a bit more of a corporate style. Um, and what I found is, and why I'm really excited, I think, at Cyclad is it's nice to be back at a, a business that's a lot more connected to their clients, a lot more agile as well. Um, that's the one thing I've noticed just in software as a service in general is there's just so many different um, software businesses coming out that if you're not shifting and changing quickly, you can definitely lose a lot of market share. So, yeah, since I've joined, um, it's just been incredible to see um, how quick uh, things, you know, change and adapt in the business, um, which is really exciting and also quite daunting at times. But it just shows that, um, you know, if Luke and Matt want to, you know, get things sorted or work on billing like he's doing right now, they can really make those changes nice and quick. And I think that's really great being able to change things so quickly for clients and for the Cyclide agency. So definitely a nice learning just to be back in a small agile tech business. Um, I'm definitely yeah, looking forward to bringing just some extra energy and insight from my background. Um, I definitely want to, like, like Luke said, spend more time engaging with the, the Cyclide community, be it from ad hoc training to, you know, running the, the town halls. But as an overall side, just to make sure that we, you know, I'm taking stuff off Luke's plate so he can focus on the product, the commercials, making sure you guys are generating the revenue in the correct way while I'm working alongside them to make sure that you as the software users are getting the most out of it. And I'm really excited to work with Luke and the team to plan out ways we can assist you guys, be it training, be it inside building the community like we're doing on Discord, which I think is, is really working really nicely. Um, but I think it's just looking at that and how we can refine it. So, yeah, and I think, as I said, like since I've joined, what I've noticed is, um, you know, things just do improve so quickly. They always, Luke and the team are always looking to launch new things, improve new things. It's definitely very customer centric. It's not top line or bottom line centric, which I think is really impressive. It's really about bringing a product that they know um, will bring value to clients. So yeah, um, I felt very welcome for from everyone on the on Discord and everything. But yeah, definitely looking forward to you know working with the community and working with everyone. Um, and yeah, and it's going to be a bit of a ramp up. But I'll always make sure I just get you guys the answers. Anything I don't know, I'll find that information for you. And it's going to be a, a learning curve, but I'm always making sure it's just to ensure you guys get the best experience and, and pass it on to your clients. I think that's definitely my biggest goal. Okay. But yeah, I think that, I think it's a good summary for now, Luke. Yeah, thanks, Colin. I think we chucked <laughs> in at the deep end, to be honest. It's what, the <laughs> third week now, and we've had quite a lot going on. We launched, um, for those that haven't noticed or have, haven't seen it, uh, we've launched a new 
chat and help desk uh, tool uh, to get us up and running and help you, help you guys um, manage support better. So a bit of a um, process involved there, getting stuck in at the deep end and obviously learning learning the product and getting to grips with everything. So yeah, done a great job there and already taking stuff off, off my plate and, and helping. So fantastic. Awesome. Um, yeah, and something else that you mentioned. <laughs> um, oh yeah, well, actually, um, yeah, we've got uh, DJ and Helen here on the call. We've just tried to launch uh, the new way of doing uh, town halls, uh, change the times a bit, bring back the two session concept that we had for um, the actual training sessions that we ran. Um, hopefully that's that's going to allow a better time for uh, you guys in Australia, uh, as well as the US and, and the UK. So we've now got two times that we're going to run properly from next month. This was a more of a transition and, and getting getting Colin on board and up to speed, but Colin will run these going forward. So we'll have a session one, which will be more sort of um, Australian time zone um, and early in the UK. And then the session two, which will be later in the UK and more for the US time zone, which is this one. Uh, we'll post more about about that on Discord. Do always um, make sure you're on Discord and keeping up to date with everything because that's where most of the information and the communication will be. But we'll try and make sure we get um, good email notifications set up as well. Um, I, I think we probably uh, should have sent an extra one out on this one beforehand. So apologies if you're watching the recording and had hope to join. Um, one of the reasons why it was a little busy um, was I've been putting quite a lot of time into the billing side of things, which I think we'll run through in, in just a second. As whoever watched it back in January, there's there's a lot to it to try and simplify it, improve it and um, ramp it up, uh, launch it for you guys. So have been putting quite a lot in there and it'd be exciting to get some feedback on that as well. For anybody who's watching the recording, I'll make sure there's a thread in Discord and, and getting some feedback would be really, really helpful. Obviously, the more we can let us know now, the more we can make sure we get it get it right as we as we roll it out. <clears throat> and yeah, the other reason why it's been a pretty busy start for Colin uh, is we've got a big event coming up next week in the Dominican Republic. So I'll be out there uh, next week and um, getting getting a, a, a big network of um, agencies. Um, Sort of more access to Cyclide and, and hopefully getting more, more agencies on board there. Yeah, cool. Uh, well, I'll jump into it. Um, I mean, anybody, any questions so far? Anything anybody wanted to comment on before we jump into billing? Uh, I think this is the smartest, makes the most sense way to go about billing that I've seen to date. Good to hear. <laughs> well, you'll be pleased to know I haven't changed too much since January. We've, um, I'll, I'll pull it up in just a second, but just to give a summary, we've been really working through that concept. We got really good feedback from you guys back in January about the, the way to go. So we really stuck with it. And the really important bit is we've had the, the green light sign off and roll out from Platform OS as well. So it's fantastic to get fantastic to get all of that in place with them. And now it's just a case of firming everything up and rolling it out with um with you guys and getting getting you using it. So yeah, I'll I'll pull that up onto my screen now. So what I'll do is I'll quickly just compare to what we looked at back in January. So this is the January uh, presentation that we did and um, show that essentially we haven't changed too much at all. It's the same concept for those that don't know. Um, what we're really trying to do is just simplify billing. There's some issues at the moment. I'll go to the new one because it's slightly different, but we'll switch back. But we just want to improve and simplify it. We know it needs work. I'll summarize this because we have, have talked about this quite a bit, but um, there's currently a big disconnect when you're trying to charge your customers and then not know what you're paying us and trying to manage the twos, very disconnected. Unknown and unexpect unexpected costs, so things like overages and upgrades, really hard to predict. Um, Oh, the fourth one there is that annual billing sort of restarts another year. That was an unfortunate sort of platform OS uh, requirement with their setup, which we managed to be able to sort of free ourselves from now. So lots of improvements that we knew we could make, and we've just been really, really working hard on um, how to how to launch it. So the, the final two on that slide are being able to like manage 
volume sites at volume you might some of you guys have maybe even 100 sites sites let's say and just managing that individually is is quite hard work so um trying to help someone who's got one site was or 100 and make sure the system works for anywhere even beyond that and lastly also really being able to control usage and limits and uh, things like form cases uh, being able to turn that functionality off if you don't want it so that you can just run static sites if you want to we want uh, site glide to be the choice for every project not just certain projects and that's something we really focused on a lot with this new model so moving on quickly um the sort of fundamental changes that we outlined last time uh, I'll switch back because I don't think anything on this slide has changed um, or, or the last one actually. Uh, essentially, we want to release one bill for all sites on the reseller model so that the way where you can just, just manage all your sites in, in one, uh, allow you to just have one monthly bill, um, but also uh, look at options for annual. Ensure that all usage is optional, like we just talked about, being able to turn off cases perhaps, and also build a proper automated billing system where you can actually control um, or put it on autopilot so that um, the, the two sides are not disconnected. So just to quickly go over um, the, the structure of it, um, what we've really focused on is we, we know we still need site plans. You can't really get away from that. End clients are going in many cases are going to want to be on a plan with a fixed price with an amount of usage and you might want to put somebody on it and know that they're never going to go above it so we've still got that concept but then the new concept is really bringing in this reseller model um in january i called it consolidated billing that was a sort of a, a name from adobe business catalyst i think reseller plan is a much cleaner simpler way of pitching it i'll show you that in a second but a concept of you guys just paying uh, just having one bill from site glide for everything that you use very clearly itemized across all of your sites and then being able to resell um, however you want to your customers um, and then being able to put that together so if we just quickly look at that we've got site plans here i'll go into the details of those then reseller plan for you guys and then being able to put that together site plans plus reseller plan and I'll, I'll, I will go through this in a little bit more detail, um, but just to summarize again how we did back in January, the way that with site plans, a client can pay site glide directly. That can be just that you don't want to get involved with it at all, or maybe using the affiliate program. And we, we will be keeping the affiliate program going. That was a question from January, um, where essentially, if you just want to stay out of billing, uh, you can let the client pay for a site plan and potentially receive a, a commission or offer them a discount. Then over here in the green, we've got the reseller model, which is where you just pay us via the reseller plan, pay for what you use, and then bill your clients however you'd like to. So we'll, we'll provide you the data via API. We'll put it in the UI. You can do whatever you want with that and, and bill them separately. I know some of you guys have people on retainers and you include it in there, or you might just have a very simple billing model where it's a set price <clears throat> and you just absorb the, the differences in usage. And then the middle one, it's going to take us a little longer to release this, but it's um, a fully automated model where you guys pay, um, sorry, the client pays you guys via Stripe checkout will be the most likely route. And then you pay us the consolidated bill or the reseller um, bill and the two sync up nicely and you actually um, don't have to manage those two things separately. So that's exactly the same from January. Uh, the only thing that, that, that's changed there is just the naming of going from consolidated billing to reseller model uh, or reseller plan. And if we now just look at the specific pricing of those, those uh, different types, we've got site plans here. So this is where we will make um, plans available publicly, essentially for people to buy and you guys can use it as a sort of RRP reference point to sell to your customers. You might sell these plans exactly um, and, and through the uh, affiliate program or just stay out of billing, or you might actually use these plans in conjunction with the reseller model so that you can show people the, 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 those plans but then pay us completely separately and, and have your margin in between or you can make your own plans up entirely and do whatever you want to do so yeah the only change here really is we have 
included some units in the essential plan that was zero before um, and we've actually uh, and there's a, a slight increase there in cost uh, accordingly uh, change the plan names a little bit we'll still want a little bit of input from from you guys on on naming we felt static wasn't a relevant name anymore um, when there's actually units included because you can do whatever you want with that it might not be static at all and i'm pretty sure that's that's about it let's just jump back to it so that we can compare this was the example one um it wasn't any in any way confirmed at that time but we've tried to keep as close to it as we possibly can um and as i say i think the only real change there is essential's gone up a tiny bit and um the third plan has actually come down in in cost uh to a hundred dollars so the concept of this, yep, you just you can just sell a plan. The extras are based at the same rate, effectively. So the client can stay on this plan as long as they want. But at some point, it will make sense to upgrade um, and benefit from the, the the better rate, effectively. These plans run off the same concept as the reseller plan. They just um, are obviously more client friendly and more fixed uh, to, to not have a fluctuating price. Um, There'll probably be an annual option. I haven't really firmed that up, but that's that's something that we can discuss, get more detail on, maybe do this sort of one month free uh, concept. But again, you will have the ability to do your own ones of these and offer your own incentives for, for annual potentially. If anybody wants to jump in with a question, please feel free. But otherwise, I'll I'll just finish uh, talking about the different concepts, uh, different plans, and then um, we can jump into it. So the most important bit for you guys, the new bit, is the reseller plan and the change here there is a little bit of a change that i want to explain so if i pull up the old one the main thing here and i remember devon and nick were asking quite a few questions about how, how are we going to be able to um offer a site for twenty dollars and and like any site and then you guys only pay for usage on top so um that has changed slightly to instances and domains this is actually gives us quite a bit more flexibility it's a platform os thing as part of the deal and the way we've mapped it out with them but it means that you could potentially run some sites on production but you don't you just don't need a domain potentially so um we split it out it's not necessarily that domains have a have a set value we just split the two um so that you could just run sites without domains if you wanted to um or you can add as many domains as you want for that additional cost you just feel it's quite nice to have that split um we also will be able to do incentives and discounts for resellers on those metrics so we might be able to one month say instances are half price as an example or get your first uh instant free and only pay for your domains and usage so it just gives a, lo a lot more flexibility to to try and make sure we can help you guys uh incentivize um using it and help with those projects where maybe you know you just need to get that client on board and then they're going to spend more over time so we'll do our best to to help out with that um yeah and otherwise it's not changed a, a great deal really we just obviously had to really work the numbers and make sure it all works at every level it's still the same concept you pay for your instances pay for your domains pay for the units based on a on a graduated model so you the more you're using as an agency across all of your sites, the cheaper everything's getting and the more margin you're making um, on all of your projects because that project that you sold at the beginning um, where you're at basically close to the rate of the normal site plans, as you've got 10, maybe more sites, that unit cost has come down considerably because you're paying um, a lower rate overall sort of economies of scale model. And I, I really do think that that can become very attractive and it's hopefully a good incentive to do more. And, and that's what we want to encourage you to do. We want you to be able to, to resell SiteBlad to more or more customers and benefit in doing so. Also, a big point of reseller versus plans is there's no waste from an agency perspective. Currently, if you're on a site plan, you might be using a tenth of it. You might have a 10,000 item limit and you're only using a thousand so that's nine thousand wasted that you're paying for with this you only pay for what you use but the site plans that you're reselling to customers you're you're allowing them 
X amount, but only paying for what you actually need. So there's even more margin to be made in, in there. And I'll show you that lastly on this example, where essentially we're combining the two models. Imagine you had 12 sites across those four plans. The client's going to pay you a total of $1,125, and you're just going to pay the $12 for the site, $12 for the domain across those all of those sites. That gives you a total cost of 288 for the instant for the instances and the domains. And then you're just going to pay for the usage. What we've done here is um, looked at what the usage would be for those plans if they were at the maximum. So if each of these customers were using the, the total allowance, which is very unlikely, um, that would be your total cost for, for those units. Your total spend would be 675. Your profit would be 450. And that gives you a margin of 40%, which um, is basically your minimum margin in this example. It's far likely to be higher because their usage is gonna be lower. And obviously you've got the ability to resell this however you want it anyway. You could you'd potentially charge more for it. In this example, it gives an overall um, average cost per site of $56.25, which it's very, because it's so flexible and varied, it's very hard to say um, what that looks like, but you might have a massive site running uh, within that within that um, reseller plan that you can charge a, a far higher value, or you might have 12, um, you know, very similar sites and, and it works out quite well. So totally up to you how you use it, how you resell it, just a very simple model in terms of how, how you pay us. And that's what we really wanted to focus on. Luke, um, um, Luke, we've just got yeah. a, two questions from Helen. So she sure. was just asking in the chat just about the what the units include. Um, yep. And then it was also just our clients on plans now affected by the new plans. Yeah, really good questions. Um, I've got a few FAQs from last time that I've, I've checked and updated. Again, not much has changed, but to answer a question on units, um, I don't know if you can see it there. Let me, I'll, I'll go into full screen mode. Apologies, I should have done that. Um, so units are the ones that you're already used to. It's records, emails, storage, and API calls. We may add some other metrics. We may do things like automations um, if, we, if we bring in more features and functionality, but it's only going to be for extra value. It's not going to be suddenly just a metric that um, you don't see any value from. So at the moment, it's the ones that you're used to. We're just bundling them all up together and calling them units because if we kept them separate, it's a lot more complicated and you'll probably find that you end up hitting limits of one rather than all of them. You've probably got that at the moment where one site has got, I don't know, 10,000 email limit, 10,000 record limit, and you max out on one of them, but not the other. So we're just trying to get rid of all of that and say, have 50,000 or 25,000 in the case of growth or 5,000 in launch, use it however you like across those metrics. I hope that answers that question, uh, Helen, but do let us know in the chat if you've got any others. And again, I'll see the extras uh, um, are, are just on top at the same rate effectively. So totally up to you. So that's from your customer perspective. Obviously it's exactly the same on the reseller model. It, it is records, emails, storage, and API calls. Um, so your total usage across all sites, across all of those metrics, just keeping it nice and simple and meaning that you only you essentially have three things that you pay for in a month that you'll see in the breakdown of the bill. You could have 100 sites, and all you're going to see is a total number of instances, a total number of domains, and a total number of units across all sites. And that's it. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'll try and get back to the chat quickly and just have a look to remind myself of the other question. Um, sorry, Colin, do you want to remind me, actually? Sure. Um, so yeah, she was just asking, are clients on plans now affected by the new plans? Sure. Yeah. Um, so let's go on to the FAQs. Uh, the, the short answer is no. Uh, everything will stay exactly as it is. And that is the trickiest part, but also the most important part of this whole thing. Um, it's, been a, it's been a mammoth task with Platform OS on our side, and it, and it would be on your side as well if we didn't do this. So what we have to make sure we do is keep everything the same and offer a migration path should you want it to um, the reseller plan, and at some point, a migration path to the new site plans um, over time. 
it, we won't force that uh, at least immediately and we'll make sure that it makes sense to do it we, the whole point here is we do not want you having to go back to a customer and saying sorry but it's now this much more expensive for no reason we, we do not want to do that we do want to try and give you a simple simpler model and hopefully an upsell opportunity because we've made it better or simpler or giving you giving you better margins so uh no no immediate um no effect to existing sites they will continue to be billed as normal if we just go on to the faqs quickly um so yeah how does it differ to current billing and how can i switch over it has to be somewhat seamless we're going to have to match your current spend and this is what i'm working out on at the moment and we'll come back to each of you with a sort of migration uh option it will be optional um and we'll sort of show the benefits of switching to the reseller model and making sure that um we we just map it and make it simple for you so yeah if you had a certain current spend we would move that to one bill and you would just have instances domains and total units um so we'll we'll come back to that and give you a more detail on how that would work but you still have the option to start a billing together. I know some people prefer using the affiliate program or just letting their clients pay and staying out of it entirely. They'll you'll have that option and the option to, as, as I've said here, use the affiliate program. What else have we got? Um, so there'll be an area, a new area in portal once we have the reseller model where you can just see that total um, list of sites, total spend across those three metrics and give you access to the data to do whatever you want with it as well if you want to charge your clients separately um and then to other questions what margins can i expect to make using the reseller plan so you, you start to make margin once you have two sites or more really and once you have about a thousand units or more it, the, the whole idea here is that we're not just saying um you have to be a certain type of customer to get a discount what we're saying is you get a discount based on um using the platform and having a lot of usage so that sets you apart from an end customer um they don't have that so you already have an advantage by having multiple sites and then you can do what you want with that margin <clears throat> you can pass it all back to them if you wanted probably wouldn't recommend it but <laughs> it's completely up to you um so yeah so the margins then increase pretty rapidly for two region, reasons really you're charging people for an allowance and only paying the actual that's something we looked at a minute ago and you're getting a much cheaper rate for the subsequent sites because you're getting this economies of scale off the whole of your um unit rate uh, based on your total usage um yeah so we'd expect you to earn more than the current discount model uh fairly quickly could see margins around 60 percent and that's without marking up standard plans i mean that is totally up to how you use it and, and how you pitch it but uh, and, and um, how much usage there is but um, th th there's huge opportunity to make good margins there in terms of how it works we're still finalizing the automation side um, but it will likely be that you can have your own stripe account um, stripe is just the easiest way to get this going there will be you'll be able to use whatever you want if you just use our data via the api but if you use stripe have your own stripe account and use the stripe connect uh, feature to pass you that data and then let you build people accordingly um oh yeah helen thanks for confirming that made sense so yeah hopefully that that covers most of it um in terms of timescales and everything, we're going to get the new plans up and running and available ASAP uh, so that they're available, especially for sort of new sites, the uh, new customers. Um, the reseller model as close behind that as possible so that you can start using that. And obviously alongside that some sort of migration path and discussing that with you in terms of how you would switch existing sites over to it but again finalizing everything but there'll probably be an option just to start it for new sites at first if you want to but um it will make more sense to try and move sites across to it because then you benefit from that that economies of scale uh yeah so we'll be in touch very soon but i mean the biggest summary and highlight of today is letting you know that it's 100 uh, percent happening we've got the got it all live and working with platform OS now we're finalizing 
how we deliver it, but this is the new model and the new pricing. Um, and it will be available very, very soon. Any other questions? I'll stop sharing my screen for a second. Um, th there will be other things to ask you guys and discuss. I mean, we'll we'll send out something in Discord to sort of um, try and prompt some of those questions and get some feedback on anything either that we're not sure of or an area where we feel we need to just really sort of run through it and get your input. Um, and we'll try and pick a few different people to go through it with in terms of number of sites, size of sites, that kind of stuff before um, fully, fully ramp it, uh, rolling it out. Cool. Okay, well, um, I think what I'll do to keep this short for the recording is just move on and show the new, fe new feature I was just going to show very quickly, and then we'll probably leave it there and do more of a um, maybe impromptu Discord meeting um, very, very soon where, where people can give us feedback and discuss billing in more detail. Um, Helen said, nice to see the 2023 awards on the site guide homepage. Yes, a little bit slow to update those, but um, yeah, I've got the new G2 awards on there. We've, yeah, won a few new ones this time, including um, High Performer for Europe, I think it was. So uh, that was nice to see. Uh, yeah, I'll quickly show off this feature. So for those that aren't aware of site builder you probably are by now because i talk about it quite a bit um but we've got a new update to the site builder um feature so for the, if you're not aware there's a completely free to use product within site glide now within the marketplace that you can install where it helps you just build out sites quicker um all it does really is uses existing site glide functionality but standardizes it and makes it easier and quicker to use and it works with design systems and themes such as the, the Bootstrap 5 Studio one that we originally did, as well as Flowbyte, which is a, a very powerful open source and, and premium um, design system. So yeah, to show you very quickly, in Site Builder, you would normally set up a pay, uh, page template. This one's using Flowbyte. In Page Builder, you can then build out pages very, very quickly. So you might want to put in some dynamic or static sections. Um, and then the new bit, just to show you, is under layouts. There's all various types of layouts and uh, group by module in here. The new one to show you very quickly, if we go under web apps, this is where you can essentially map a web app that you've made um, to a custom layout, uh, one of these ex existing layouts to save you having to do all of that, uh, that coding. Using something like, this is an example that that's just where you would if you click add to site, you would then pick your web app as uh, a team one so then you'd map your fields together so. Um, you would put your profile picture in the image tag and then you'd fill out the rest that's something that we've had for a few uh, weeks now, maybe a little bit longer the new feature where you see these. Um, colored tabs or tags if you keep scrolling down you'll see one called live updates ready. So that's a completely new feature that's going to be really, really powerful for building out like applications or anything where you've got data and needing people to work with the data. So this is a um, web app sort of live updating table that you can install. So again, you would pick your web app that you want to apply this to, and then you would pick the different um, fields to map. But th th that is a table with loads of different data running off an existing web app that you've created. If we just go and have a look at that, at that on the front end, sort of here's one um, that we built earlier. Matt Jones built this for me uh, on the Site Gurus team, built all of this out for me to demo for today. So this is just a table of data from the back end web app. If we just go to web apps quickly and go to team. In here, we've got three people. And if we go into the one of them, you'll see that we've got some custom fields, profile picture, role, um photos all sorts of data including things like a field for onboarding status and nearby offices so then when you go to the front end it will automatically this layout will automatically know um what uh, allow you to use the categories that you set at the back end and, and those fields and then what it does is it has a live update feature 
based on um, a JavaScript API that uh, will now handle all of these, these kind of live update layouts. So you can very quickly implement a new layout with all of this kind of live update uh, functionality built in. And it'll just save you a, a huge amount of time when, when mapping out or building out um, interactive uh, data tables and components. So that's an example of just the out of the box site builder layout. So if you inserted that, that's, that's how it would work and look. Um, then you can have one with some pagination as well. So if you wanted to set it to one per page, then you could do that. And then here, using some JavaScript options to add a transition effect. So if we put um, one of those filters on, you'll see that's just got sort of a blur feature. So there's all sorts that you can do on top of the standard functionality, um, but the main thing is just gonna save you a huge amount of time with building out these tables. As I mentioned, this uses Flowbytes. This is just using one of the Flowbyte uh, table layouts that they offer, but it's fully integrated into Cyclide with this new um, live update functionality as well. We just went further down to their list. They've got all sorts of functionality, uh, all sorts of UI components, sorry. If we just go to advanced tables. Um, we've got quite a lot in here now. There we go, advanced tables. This is in their sort of application section. If we scroll down, we should see one that looks a little bit more. I mean, is any of those essentially, but um, yeah, you could grab any of these layouts and, and we'll get more and more of them working with, with Site Builder and the live updates feature. So yeah, do go and test it out. It went live today. Um, definitely need some feedback on some of the functionality and, and just how, how we can expand it. So give it a go, create a web app, uh, then go to Site Builder, uh, put some data in it, go to Site Builder, and then install a layout under web apps that has the, the live updates tag. So if you keep scrolling down, you'll see this one here has live updates ready tags. Just look for one of those, uh, add it to the site and map it to the map the fields accordingly. Hopefully that makes sense. Just checking the chat for any questions. Um, and said, will this will this live updates API work for filtering products? Um, I mean, from e-commerce, that's a good question. I think immediately it's web apps. We haven't done much on e-commerce yet for a couple of reasons. One of the main reasons is Flowbyte are finishing their application UI first and then moving on to e-commerce. So once they do, we will really be um, mapping out all of the e-commerce layouts and integrating the functionality of Cyclide into them. So they'll become very powerful. In the meantime, there's absolutely no reason why those can't work with e-commerce. It would just take a little bit of um, updating. If we could potentially put together one of these table layouts for, for products, I would have thought in a pretty small amount of time if it was a, um, a, a, a project requests maybe through site gurus. That's definitely something that, could, that they could do. Um, but yeah, so sort of answer your question more generically, um, all of this can work with any functionality really. It could be that you've built a module called real estate listings and there's a layout specifically for that. So you'd actually just go to your custom module that you would have installed from the marketplace. Um, it would appear in this list if you've set it up to work with Site Builder. And then you can um, have layouts installed without even doing the mapping at that point. You just imagine it was um, blog. <clears throat> Let's just go to, the, go to this one maybe. You don't even have to map the fields for this because it already knows it's already been set up correctly. So yeah, that would be very, um, very quick and easy to, to expand out the different modules. Cool. Um, is live, uh, glad to see interactive functionality. Yeah, is live updates available for Bootstrap? Um, I think the only layout we've done at the moment is Flowbyte. I will double check on that. But again, it's literally at this point, it's just uh, rolling out layouts. So anybody could do that effectively if they're running their own theme perhaps or want to contribute to the open source Bootstrap one. Um, and it's something that um, the team could do based on requests and um, uh, priorities, I guess. 
but it's the infrastructure that's set up now that means just pretty much anything's possible we just need to need more time more hours in the day to roll those kind of things out <laughs> cool yeah just a little update there uh try and give you an idea of where site builders going to I kind of tie that in you might have noticed there's like a sidebar here um we're actually mapping out some more of the application kind of portal functionality at the moment and this was one of the key features that needed building um to really release that so very soon without putting time scales on it you should see some sort of portal template or um application template available in the marketplace so for those that don't know if you um go to site settings on a site and go to modules you'll see all the different things that you can install and under um modules you would you'd see all the different things that can be installed so um very soon i'm trying to remember what i was going to show you here um what's that link to Oh yes, uh, sorry. What I want to show is not a module category. It was the theme category. Uh, actually, let's just go off to marketplace quickly. Apologies. Uh, it's the template category that I'm trying to show from the marketplace. So here you can install a Bootstrap Five demo, demo site, which is built in with Site Builder using the Bootstrap Five open source um, theme. The flow by landing page one, so that's a very simple uh, landing page template that you can just get started with to kind of get used to flow bytes, um, test out the dynamic form functionality, for example. There's a marketing one, and very soon there'll be a portal stroke application template for building out pretty complex um, application, bespoke application projects, um, leveraging the flow box, uh, flow byte, sorry, uh, is a, a design system and site glide functionality such as web apps secure zones forms that kind of stuff um i think i'll leave it there for now i've shown quite a bit there is a, a docs um site for everything to do with site builder and we've got some docs in there for live updates as well we are going to um split this out a little bit and make it a little bit easier to follow but it covers the basics of getting started so if you are using site builder and especially Flowbyte, then do give it a spin because it's really really powerful Right, we're coming up to the hour mark. So, um, yeah, I think DJ, I know you had a few questions for us. Over to you. Yes, um, thanks for that uh, overview. Great work as always, guys. A um, few questions. Where are we on admin permissions? So, the idea of being able to um have permissions per user that we invite to the site instance to manage it you know and the ability to like hide you know code editor for example so they don't get themselves in trouble and break the site you know kind of thing and, and stuff like that that whole permissions conversation that we've had in the past where are we on that yeah sure um we are working on the sort of next version of it which we've discussed before which will allow you to have some granular permissions it's not going to be absolutely everything at a granular level but um that kind of uh, control that you've just mentioned being able to have different sort of user types and pretty pretty obvious um useful uh permission levels that's being worked on at the moment um, i do apologize i've been pretty heavily uh into billing recently and trying to get that right so i would have to go and get updates on any of the roadmap related stuff and we can discuss it in discord not a problem to give you an idea of time scales there but yeah definitely um it is one of the one of the key things that we're working on at the moment and, and know we want to release i know in discord a few people were discussing very specific user access and i do think it's worth looking at front-end secure zone logins for very specific um control so i think the one mentioned yesterday was being able to like let certain people edit certain pages um and do certain things with certain pages that's not realistic in a in a back-end cms i don't think or not 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 in cycle in the very short term 
So, but that's something that can be built really, really easily at the front end. And we strongly recommend doing that, especially with this new functionality and um, built-in functionality with Flowbyte and uh, Site Builder. So it depends what you're looking for, uh, DJ, but uh, definitely the standard admin stuff that you would expect um, we're, we're working on it in the back end. Okay. Um, second question, off of the top of your head, can you think of the best way that I would a approach? Um, I've got a, a situation where a client has like 10 videos and they're wanting to sell access to each one of those videos individually as well you know for one price as well as sell access to all 10 for a discounted second price mm -hmm. um just trying to think through how to build that out uh you know what the best way i mean you know obviously i could spin up e-commerce i could make the video a product possibly um but you know um I, I don't know i'm just that's why i'm putting it out there is just can you think of kind of a uh the best way or just point me in a direction you know uh, on how to achieve something like that sure um springs to mind with trying not to use e-commerce i'd be looking at secure zones and seeing whether you could i think creating a secure zone per product and then one for all is probably hopefully overkill um but you could do it that way where you charge different amounts for access to different secure zones so that's the immediate the one one that came into my head but hopefully if we post this in discord afterwards hopefully others would come in with some ideas i think if you didn't do that and you're still trying to stay away from e-commerce then maybe there's some like custom custom logic that can be done with then one thing you probably don't want to do is a basic payment form where you've got one minimum price in there because people could override that so you, you you ideally want to have a set price for each one server side which does mean probably individual forms potentially for each one so at that point maybe it's better to go the e-commerce route i'm i'm not yeah and i'm not necessarily trying to stay away from e-commerce and you know if if that's the best option you know that probably makes sense because then i would just have 11 products you know right so exactly. videos one through 10 would each have the single price if you will product number 11 would have this the price for all 10 and they would just pick whichever one they want and check out but then you probably need two think, things, you okay. know yeah i think right now as it stands is in order for them to access the video to push the play button, I have it behind a secure zone. Exactly. So yeah. if I'm embedding the video on the website, they purchase the product, it would, I guess, have to send them to to that product on the site versus just giving them a link like from YouTube or Wistia or Vimeo or whoever, you know, wherever the video resides and just send them there you know, kind of thing. I mean, it, it, it would be risky using external links regardless of the platform, because obviously anybody could then start sharing those links. So you'd be better off locking it down within within the product and in lockdown pages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you probably could use Liquid actually. Um, if you wanted to keep it public, you might be able to use Liquid to check whether somebody has ownership of that video you could use maybe a web app for it again i'm not probably not the person right person to map this out fully but just thinking aloud you could you could probably control what people see based on the data in the back end and maybe not even need a login um potentially but it's probably better to do it with secure zones yeah yeah usually josh is here but i guess yeah. because of the time change he could be sleeping right now <laughs> maybe but yeah um, i definitely i think it's a great example of one to chuck in discord anyway obviously great to have discussions here and in i think we're going to try and do some more impromptu discord calls where people can kind of brainstorm these ideas but then always chuck it in discord as well for for other people to chip in we've seen a load of that since moving to discord one this week helen um i know you were talking a lot with 
Sunil and quite a few different people collaborating on different functionality. And it's just, it's great to see it. And it, it, it doesn't matter how, how much we help, there's going to be examples of people doing really cool things that we don't know about. So it's better that we just let you guys help, you know, uh, share um, learnings really. Yeah, so just in the general community uh, thread, then just put the question out there. Yeah, I think either the general support or the developer one. Um, if it's if it's technical developers, is probably a bit better. Yeah, I haven't personally seen much success with that yet, but okay, I know that as the community grows and things like that, you know, I mean, I've put a couple of questions out there that just never got. Really? Uh, answered or whatever you know so between you know site gurus obviously and you know just putting it out there for the community um i, I expect to get an answer there sure i mean just so you know site wide support is in we plan to deliver the best support in the community as well so it's not like a everyone else can help you and we're not going to be there. It's meant to be an additional help. So apologies that's happened, obviously with Colin joining the team and um, taking over all of this and making sure that Discord is used as uh, best as possible. Uh, he's already shown us he won't he won't let us miss anything. He, uh, he lets us know if there's something in there and, and we'll we'll get back to you guys. So yeah, put it there. You should always hear from Cyclide if, if, if nobody else, so yeah. Sounds <clears throat> good. My last question, I think I already know the answer to, but just in case I'm not, you know, I'm missing something or I'm not privy to the latest information. Uh, and this too may fall under, you know, just asking somebody from a technical side, but um, curious to know if there is a way to give access to a secure zone by just using a code. <laughs> I, I think when I say I think I know the answer to that, uh, you know, I, I can't think of a way to do that because to access a secure zone requires a username and password, you know, um, and that username and password tied to a user in the system has to have access to that secure zone in order for them to, you know, fully authenticate and see the content on the page. But I just, I had a client that was saying, you know, I would prefer that they just go to our website, enter a code, and then start you know, um, perusing the content that we put in a secure zone. And I was like, I, I can't do that. I don't think it's possible. I, I need a username and password to get them to see that, but just thought I would ask in case. You, you should definitely be able to do that um, in terms of what I would hope the answer is. Um, that's very basic. I know tools, so there are some other tools out there that only allow you to do that in terms of securing content. And it's, it's a very, um, simple way to do it versus the secure zone route. So I, I imagine there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, Liquid is probably one of them um, and a generic secure zone and then Liquid um, giving access is probably another. I, I think there's probably quite a few ways to do that. I would, I would very much hope the answer is 100% yes. <laughs> All right, I'll put it out there too and see, see what I get. Cool. Um, yeah, I really hope so. <clears throat> cool. Um, yeah, hi, David. I see you've joined, joined the call as well. Uh, welcome. If you've got any questions for us, do let us know. Apologies, you missed um, probably the, the chat on new pricing. So do watch the recording afterwards. Um, and generally also, also interesting, Colin, who's joined the team in the last, I think this is the third week now, uh, head of uh, success. I'm going to help help you guys get the most out of the platform. So, yeah, uh, do let us know if you have any questions. Uh, no worries if not. Um, in the meantime, uh, Helen, you've asked for clarification options to seek help from Cyclide. Portal ticket and Discord and Cyclide admin chat. Do you mention? Did you mention that this has been revised, updated? Yeah, so we've just launched a new support uh tool internally and the changes for you guys is that there's a new live chat which i know there's a lot of frustration with the previous one where essentially there was one chat for everything you've now got essentially separate chats that you can have and, and discuss different issues um new help docs are in there as well uh and colin's been doing a great job of checking that they've all migrated over successfully and, and fixing any links um there is 
some functionality in there to sort of help answer questions better. And we're going to be optimizing that a bit, um, as well as showing um, tours in it within the product as well, which we'll try and do just to make it easier to learn new features and that kind of stuff. But otherwise, yes, you're right. So there's the chat widget in the tool, which is mainly for account related questions or just anything sort of non-technical really. For anything technical, it will let you know that the best thing to do is create a, uh, a ticket in portal or if it's something that you just want to chat about um, and need a sort of quicker answer on, maybe put it into one of the Discord general questions channel, channels, general chat or developers. So tickets should be your main place for anything specific to one of your customers, either confidential or just something where you just want to log something with us and know that we'll get back to you in a, in a as quickly as we can. Discord is more I've just got a question and I want to chat about it and see who see who gets back to me um, and, and get a discussion going. And then live chat is account related questions. I hope that makes sense. Cool. Okay, well, we've, we've gone over the hour. So um, unless there's any more questions, we'll probably leave it there for this time. Um, so I'll just see one more question from Helen on the Discord topic. Do you prefer a Discord channel discussion or a site-wide admin chat? Um, it, it does depend. I think generally Discord channel discussion, uh, if, if you mean your team channel, so some, some of you guys have a team channel with us where everybody on your team can discuss um, anything internally, but also have us there to help. That's probably the best place to go if it's anything that your team needs to see. Obviously, if you just have a one-to-one -one chat with us on the live chat, then they're gonna miss out on that and, and the bits lost. So I would leave live chat as your last resort, really. It's more for account quick account questions. Um, I would do a Discord team um, chat or a general channel as well. And then portal tickets are for something that you know that we're gonna to need to go away and look at and you just want to have a record of it and know that we're going to get it back to you. <clears throat> cool. Okay. Well, yeah, it was a, it was great to great to go through billing and, and thanks thanks um for joining us. Um we're going to, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to uh, firm up how we're going to run these town halls going forwards, two sessions, one in the morning UK time, one in the afternoon, that suits the sort of Australian um, time zone better for the morning and the uh, US for the afternoon one. So we'll get those firmed up and we'll get more comms in place to announce them and, and give reminders because obviously we know, we know people are busy. So apologies if you didn't um, get a reminder about that, we'll make sure we do for future ones. And we'll see you very soon. See you next month, if not before. Perfect. Oh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Ciao. Thanks, guys. Ciao.